guys, I'm Richard with Beck Tools, and today I'm going to unbox this Best Arc Plasma Cutter. Now, this is the Cut 55 XP 12th Gen. This is a 110 or 220 volt um, cutter. Now, at 55 amps, if you want the full 55 amps, you're going to have to have 220 volts. Um, your limiting factor is the outlet on the wall. So, this has both. Um, if you, uh, so we're going to test the 220 volt part of this cutter. Um, so far, I have reviewed quite a few of these and um, they all work great. Um, they're packaged really well, everything pretty, pretty normal. So it's, it's packed super tight. You got your accessories box. You got the plasma cutter. And the nice thing is you don't have to adapt up to 220 volts. Um, it comes with the 220 volt plug right on it. Now, this is definitely the smallest 55 amp I have reviewed from them. Um, so, that's, it's a very nice compact package. Pop open these accessories. Alright, we got some hose. We might actually need this this time. Normally, it just has a quick... Um, a QD attachment. It's, it does here, and then the regulator is on the back, and it looks like we might have to loop from the regulator into the plasma cutter using some of this. Um, your adapter, ground plug, you got some consumables, and some PTFE tape, desiccant, owner's manual, this is the hose for the back side. I'll bring you around so I can show you how to hook that up. This is a PT40. I dropped the wrench. It's fine. I got a lot of these wrenches. These almost all use the same consumables. So, you can't hook it up wrong. Um, it only hooks up one way. This is a PT40 torch. Now this looks very, very similar um, to the Everlast consumables. So if you have a PT40, PT60, I don't know, these are very similar. So that's one thing I like about this, um, the consumables are going to be um, pretty easy to find. I mean, Best Arc sells consumables for everything that they sell, um, but when it when it's this standard torch, um, it makes it even easier. So it only hooks up one way. I hook the trigger up, and then whatever this red cable is, it hooks to the red screw bum. So you can't mess that up. If you do, you shouldn't have a plasma cutter. Let's just say that. This is not for you if you can't figure out how to hook this up. Go do some other thing that's not metal fab. Um, it is easy to hook up. They have these uh, connectors spaced out. One thing, when you're pulling off this uh, super satisfying film, Playing onto your knobs because otherwise you might pop a knob off and then have to go find it. Okay, the ground. It hooks up to the ground spot, believe it or not. As far as this right here goes, on the back you have a quick detachment here. You just push in, and then when you go to pull out, it's locked. And then we're gonna loop around down here. Press in, it's locked. So this one, it's on the back. A lot of the other Best Arc plasma cutters, this is integrated inside. 
and that does cause the package size to be a little bit bigger. That's one of the reasons this is such a compact, um, small uh, package because they went ahead and moved this to the outside. Got the on button there. It's gonna power up. All right, so on this side here, this is PT is your post flow. PA is your pilot arc. I turn that down as short as possible so I don't burn up my consumables. Now post flow I want as long as possible so I can cool my consumables down more effectively. 15 amps is as low as it goes on 220 volts. It shows you right here which voltage you're running just in case you're not sure. Um, air check. So if you want to see, it says right, it shows your air pressure. So right now the air pressure is 67 PSI, which is perfect. Um, if I turn it up, you'll see this rise. Now I'm in the red. So typically you're going to be, now for it to drop back down, I need to hit the purge. And now while it's purging, I can adjust the flow. So I want it about 65 Now, when it's off, it will be over, which is fine. This is what matters to you is the, the pressure while it's on. So right there, 65. Now, we're gonna crank it all the way up because who wants to cut at 15 amps? Nobody. So you got T2 and T4. T2 is momentary. T4 is you click to start, you click to stop. I hate T4, I always use T2. Unless I've got that mixed up, we'll find out here in a second, but I'm pretty sure T2 is the one I always use. So, let's cut some material you got this piece of quarter inch plate here you can clamp right on the table it's better if you clamp on the actual part though you're always going to get better grounding that way There you go, guys. Cut like butter. Let's cut a hole. So I'm really bad at cutting holes, but hey, it works. Even if you're not good at it. I'd say two thumbs up. All right, guys, that's all I got for this video. Uh, if you found it helpful, check the link in the description below this video. If this is something you want to pick up, it's available on Amazon. Um, this is going to work great right out of the box. Every one of these I've tested has worked great right out of the box. It does what it says it's going to do. It's really inexpensive. Is it going to last 100 years? I don't know. Um, but honestly, for the price, does it matter? Um, it doesn't. Um, if you're going to buy a Miller or a Hypertherm, you're going to pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, if you're going to buy a Hypertherm that's 
you know, 45 amps, you're probably looking around $4,000. So something that's a couple hundred dollars, this is gonna handle all of your DIY projects. This is gonna handle, you know, hey, you got something, you know, some piece of metal, you wanna cut it, but you're not a full out fabricator. Even if you're a hobby fabricator, maybe a fabricator who's like, do I wanna be a fabricator? I don't know. I mean, if you don't know, can you really justify spending, you know, $4,000 on a 45 amp plasma cutter? Definitely not. Can you justify a best art? Absolutely. Um, even your wife will let you buy this because it doesn't cost that much. Um, and you can have a plasma cutter. So this definitely serves a portion of the market that is, is really underserved. And that is where Amazon and all of the different Chinese companies that make these have really come in and filled that gap. It's not for everyone, but it's definitely, definitely a good choice for a lot of people. So, I mean, I have no problem using this to rip sheets down. I have a uh, Langmar Systems MR1, and it can't, I mean, I typically will break by a four by eight sheet, and I'll cut it into three pieces, and I just grab one of my handheld vest arcs, and zip it into three pieces, and now it's, it's ready to be used on my CNC plasma table. So, overall, I don't have anything bad to say. Uh, I mean, yeah, this, I don't think you can go wrong. So, that's my, uh, that's my take on the best arc plasma cutter. And look how tiny this is. I mean, super, super compact. It's not even going to take up much space. If you have a little tiny shot, you don't want a plasma cutter that's this big. You want something tiny like this. So, that's all I got, guys. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. That's the best thing you can do to help out the channel. Also, you can leave me a comment, ask a question. I always answer all my comments. I definitely read them all. If you're, if you're a real douche, I might answer you in a way you don't like. But, hey, that's the world. You know, you give it out, it comes back. I'll see you guys next time.